who is here? Kathy Neal is here, isn't he? Did you see her? Yeah. Oh, she knows where to find me. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are continuing hey, with our good and faithful servants who mostly are, as I keep saying, invisible. But whenever I look at any of you, I, I think, and I can't say the whole song, but uh, God has called me, here I am, Lord. And that's what I think when I see all of you, that here you are, just giving of your heart, uh, leading with love, as our pastor told us today in the sermon, that lead love over fear. And that's what you do. So we're starting off with our wonderful, wonderful Emily, who has come to us on Gimpy Lake. <laughs> she has successfully overcome her knee surgery and promised me that she would do this, which says a lot about good and faithful service. So take us on board, my friend. Okay, all right. Um, I don't know how many of you know, first of all, my background, that I was born and grew up in India and spent my first 18 years uh, in India. Um, my parents were missionaries and uh, dad was, Let's see, they were in India for 41 years, and then he taught for another uh, nine years as a theologian in a seminary uh, in Sri Lanka. So 50 years altogether over there. So first of all, that's the background. And so I have grown up with this. But in particular, I want to hold up my mother who gave me, it was such a wonderful example. Um, she was trained as a nursery school teacher and owned a nursery school before she married my father on his first furlough back to the States. But she found a need right in the village where we lived um, for medical help for uh, the people of the village. And somehow they found out about the help that she could give. Uh, we had a, a hospital about 12 miles away. So she found out about how to care for these people. <laughs> she overcame these terrible, terrible, you know, wounds that people would come, you know, the villagers would have infected legs and uh, sore eyes from all the, the fleas, flies that would get into their eyes and so forth. But she got medicine and she put drops in and she tended the, the legs and, and, you know, so she, became a nurse where, where it was needed, backdoor dispensary. It was amazing to me that she gave so much of her time and sort of relearned how to help others in that capacity right at that as a nursery school teacher. She couldn't do that in the villages. Her talent wasn't that good. So, but anyway, so she, for me, was a wonderful giving person you know, to begin with. So she so, modeled for you. Modeled for me, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, she was my model. So anyway, I came to this church uh, in 1978. So I've been a member for 43 years. And of course, just like most of you uh, who came here, it was the friendliness of the people and the outreach and in the community that brought me here. You know, so <clears throat> I guess my early ministries were mainly altar guild very involved in that, became chairman for quite a while. I did the welcome bags for new visitors, take them to their houses. My pride and joy are Janet and Bob Topper, <laughs> who I visited. They were going to head for a Lutheran and were unhappy over there. So uh, I went to visit them. And of course, they're so gracious and you know that turned out really well. Um, I also did communion to the shut-ins uh, for quite a while. And um, a few of you might remember that we were supportive of New Creation Lutheran Church on Tioga Street. So we helped down there uh, quite a bit, helping with the families who were settling in, a lot of immigrants. And, um, and then uh, I supported and helped to settle our families at Hope Gardens, which is a ministry that we are participating in from the get-go. 1992 was our first adopted family 
It's a program where homeless people come into the program. There are eight apartments there, and each apartment is supported by different congregation in, uh, in the community. And uh, there's, the families are supported for two years. They go in and they have to sign up for, you know, for counseling, for financial counseling, how to get back on their feet, how to manage their time and to educate their kids to, you know, put their family forward and, and try to get back on their feet. And it's a wonderful, wonderful program. We still support them. Um, this year we have a family of two in our uh, in our apartment number one, and um, what the announcements was about they've asked for gift cards to be presented. They don't have to be big, twenty five dollars, fifty dollars, and put them in um, in um, uh, Libby Stephan's box uh, so that they can do their own shopping for their children, which. We used to before put a Christmas tree up in the Northex and everybody took a sticky for their wish list and it was a lot more complicated. Of course, COVID changed everything. So, um, so that's, you know, that's a small thing that we can do to help our families over there. Um, I also was an early supporter of interfaith, uh, the overnight program where you stay in a church for a while before we built our we really got involved and in, put in a shower here and we're full time. I slept with several other members at St. Michael's you know, Episcopal Church and so forth. So I've been involved with that. Um, I've been, I've cooked meals for loaves and fishes, which is a ministry we have actually stopped because of COVID. It just was impossible to have people come in to uh, pick up meals in our freezer here. So, and of course, flea market. So, Currently, I'm involved still with Interfaith and Hope Gardens, um, and and so this year, as I said, family of two, uh, and Chosen 300. I'm still involved with um, helping with cooking the meals, and I know they always need volunteers, guys. So if you don't have to go downtown, but you can help with baking brownies or cooking meatballs, or, you know, whatever they do need help always. And then the Maddie Dixon community covered in St. John's Mayfair boxes that we used, we always keep here under the mailboxes sort of that two years ago in, at Easter was our big push. It was Jody's idea to take the boxes out and put them on the curb, you know, for people to come by, drive by and drop their donations in. For me, that was such a brilliant stroke because it was supported, you know, at, until that time, but with closure of our church, people couldn't get in to bring their donations in, and it just was much more difficult. And, and what's neat about it now is with a drive-by, she has spread the word to like her garden club, and her garden club members make donations um, this um, the weekend that we do it, Friday and Saturday. And I think that's really neat if you can get the word out. Um, but of course, my favorite charity is One House at a Time. Oh. And, and why um, is that? Yeah. So One House at a Time is a ministry that began here in this church in 1998 by Faith Fenderson, who was a, fa a former member. And it was to, as a as a program to recycle furniture and bulk items. And she worked with the township, you know, the trash people would notify the head of, of um, uh, you know, that township pickups and everything. And they, he would call her and say, we know of a desk, we know of a table, we know of chairs and so forth that, that need to be, you know, so she would take her Volvo station wagon and go pick up the, the furniture alongside the road because as you know we live in a very affluent society here in this area and people would put stuff out just to have them haul it away a couch and so forth. So she would go and pick it up. And so I would go down with her. Her first family was to New Creation uh Lutheran Church in Ontario Street that she resettled an immigrant family that came in and brought mm -hmm. furniture to them. 
but she, her garage filled up with furniture and then it, it moved into her house. And so, you know, but she and I would do this every, every Saturday. And eventually she was able to buy this old dump <laughs> oil, oil truck, you know, like a right oil or something was one of those oil trucks. And it was, it was better than the Volvo. It, it carried more, but it was still, it had the weather stripping around the windows were gone and you could see the street. <laughs> oh yeah, it was crazy. It was really falling apart, rusting through. And finally, she uh, she wrote foundation for foundation money and went, through, you know, uh, on a rampage to get money for a sixteen foot box truck, and that's what we have now. So, um, so that was a ministry that started here with furniture and household goods and everything and everybody, I mean, the word got around the community, everybody donated and we had a lot of members, uh, several members, uh, Bart Teal in particular, Bob Maynard was, you know, one of the people that really helped a lot in the early days. And 2001 became a 501c3 and Gloria Day was a really wonderful partner with us and offered storage space down near their uh, church. And, and finally in 2011, we decided to flow, pays out the furniture part and we just went to our bits for kids. So that's what we're concentrating on now. We have a program called Bits for Kids where we initially provided 300 beds or so a year, and now we're up for 80 or 1,500 each wow. year. That's great. Yeah, we're up to 1,500. Yeah. So, and um, it, uh, it's, its goal is to end bedlessness in the greater Philadelphia <laughs> area. We work in Bucks County and uh, Montgomery County and mostly Philadelphia. And uh, referrals come from social ministry, uh, social service agencies, um, other nonprofits, schools, et cetera. Like for instance, we recently had a board meeting and we were uh, told that Upper Dublin High School uh, asked for four bids for a family that moved out because of the violence in the city and they're being settled in this area. So we get calls from schools too. I, I just have to say how that ministry touched my heart. Uh, went down one day with them, and I was not schlepping the mattress, but I was going this I bring stuff down in this weather. And this little tot comes up and wraps his arms around my leg and looks up at me with these huge, beautiful eyes and is so excited and tells me this is the first time he will have a bed. Yeah. Well, that did me in. <laughs> just literally did me in I thought oh and so I encourage you to contribute to that uh, charity yeah. it is so wonderful and so needed just think in the history of you your life with your little babies of them not being able to sleep in a bed you know it's I have a wonderful story to tell about a wonderful member of our congregation, an older, uh, good, good, an older member who every year makes very substantial donations to OHAP. And I asked her finally, I said, you know, what has driven you to this, you know, ministry? She said, I was a teacher at one time and I had this one kid in class who kept falling asleep. And finally I asked him, after a while, what aren't you getting enough sleep? My bed is the couch in the living room, and I can't go to bed till my parents stop watching TV at night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he wasn't getting sleep, you know, the proper amount for a child. You know, so mm -hmm. she said, I just really am hard for this, you know, so I really want to be generous to the mm -hmm. children. So she had more cheese patterns. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, so we provide new beds now we used to recycle beds and do them but now it's all new beds which we buy and then we provide a metal frame that it rests on top that's above the floor 
So that's something we've learned over the years about to be bed bug proof, you know, so that you have the metal, you don't have a box underneath that will harbor all these little critters, you know, so. And then we provide this purple bag that is about this deep and this wide with a brand new pillow, a twin sheet, blanket, a toothbrush, um, a books, uh, age appropriate books, a stuffed animal, and then educational materials about the importance of sleep so that the kids uh, do well in school because that's, that's what it's all about. And we're actually part of a study that's being done a chop about the change that makes in, in kids' lives, you know, if they add just a minute, you know. It can have serious physical that. repercussions. Yes, yeah, yeah. Serious, yeah. Well, isn't there another reason, a driving force that I, I was told one time when I accompanied <clears throat> the crew on the delivery yeah. that, that deliver. there's actually a, a compelling legal reason that if the Department of Youth and Children's Services finds out that a child in Philadelphia is sleeping on the floor or in the bed with adults, they're removed from the home. Now, Some, now I could be wrong. That's yeah. just what was told to me. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not exactly true. But we have had occasions, especially around Christmas, where, where the, the organization will say, we are not allowing the mother to get together with her children unless they have a bed or the father you know in, in case and and so you know my gosh it's that's like an emergency where we'll take you know a delivery down especially especially for this one person you know so and unfortunately we've got, had to go close down the whole volunteer group you know get together in the truck and a follow-up car and do these big deliveries so now we, we hired a couple of uh, tr uh, a truck driver and a helper, and there are deliveries at least twice a week where they go down and smaller deliveries like eight instead of 16 beds or eight, eight beds. <clears throat> and it's door to door. So they have been uh, uh, alerted ahead of time where you just sh shove the mattress in the door and shove the bag in the door. We used to take the, and Dottie, this is what Dottie's referring to. She used to take a big bag of stuffed animals down, let them pick out their own. Well, we don't do that anymore. You have to put this stuffed animal in the bag. And, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, so this is all door to door. So, and everybody's masked up and careful about deliveries and so forth. So it's, it's a lot different now, sadly. Eventually we're hoping we'll be able to go back to, to, uh, you know, volunteer groups. But. Can I just add something? Yeah, sure. Just, uh, and I don't know who else besides Dottie and Dawn and have done this. Maybe some of you have done this. But the, the beauty of this ministry is, is more than just writing a check. You actually have an opportunity to go to the warehouse that Gloria Day has, load up the mattresses with a bunch of other volunteers, and go into the city and go to these homes and deliver the, 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 the bed and the, the frame and all this other stuff yourself. And you cannot do that and not be affected. You cannot yeah. go into the city and go into these homes and do something uh, worthy without being humble. So that, and, and just yeah. to add to Thank that, yeah, yeah. That, you know, Don and I joined this church of, of 2015, I think it was. And the main reason was we live in Dallastown Township. We probably passed half a dozen Lutheran churches on the way here, but we we looked around and it was the social ministry that, that attracted us to this church. And again, it wasn't just writing the checks, it's the Chosen 300, it's the OHAT, it's the, uh, uh, you know, housing people of interfaith. Interfaith, yeah. Um, when you to to really do something, besides just write a dead gum check, you know. I have to say, you haven't lived until you've taken a ride in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, just you know, yeah, forget the delivery. Just driving in the city and parking on those streets, you know. And <laughs> it's I got, I got you know we come from St. Paul, Minnesota, 
And so, and when we moved here, I think we lived here for 10 years before we'd go into Philadelphia. This was in the 90s. It didn't want to go there. I got news for you, it ain't Minnesota. <laughs> You're going to Philadelphia. You're in a yeah. different world. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an eye open. Yeah. It's an eye open. Those lines, Emily, how has this affected your faith? Have you, has it really challenged you? Have you, have there been times when you said, I can't do this anymore? Uh, God kept keeping no, on you? Or no, how, no, no. how has it affected you? No, for me, it's living out my faith. You know, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's uh, James, it's showing the love that you are first given by God, you know, so it's, it's, you know, like our theme is, you know, God's work, our hands, this is just exactly what this is all about, our hands, it, you know, we can't touch these people without, you know, or God can't help them without our help, it seems to me, it's just our obligation, it's our, and not even an obligation. Opportunity. It's an opportunity, exactly. It also becomes a gift. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's true with anything that the rest yeah. of you do. I know that. Yeah. You give us gifts and you give yourselves gifts. And some of us remember Barry Moose. He just, he's not involved in the church at all, but he has such a passion for these children. And he keeps going back and back and back. He, he's one of the guys that does it, helps with the deliveries every weekend. And he's great and, because he interacts with the, yeah, with yeah. the people with delivery. He truly, truly talks to them. Those and, kids. You know, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's just wonderful to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me just, you know, because I feel like I've taken a lot of time. But um, so we're supported by individual supporters, people like you and churches, businesses, foundations, uh, school groups, and so forth. And it, monetarily or in kind donations. So, um, and I just want to highlight a couple of people from our own church, Alice Birkbeck and her sewing group make these little soft balls that are quilted. They're still and doing stuff. it. Yes, they are. She told me today at church, she, she said, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a whole bunch more for you. And what's great about them is the kids get them and they can throw them around at home and they don't harm any furniture. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, a wonderful. Um, Diane McGrath and her uh, teaching friend make no sewn blankets, you know, the, the tie, the kind you tie on the edges. Melissa Harbold and Anita Trim, they wash donations of stuffed animals that are used and need to be washed before they can be handed on, and sheets and blankets and comforters. Um, Carol has uh, volunteered uh, uh, Thrive Ant dollars to get library books, and uh, Lydia Circle did a drive here for books uh, number, uh, last year, I think, or two years ago. So, I mean, there's so many opportunities. There is a box in the corner of the narthex over underneath the mailboxes that's marked one house at a time. And so you can make any of your donations there, you know. New pillows. Um, uh, Always twin, twin beds are what we provide. So twin beds, twin sheets, comforters, blankets. And they can be used, but gently used, you know, and then um, they have to be washed. If you wash them ahead of time and put, mark it on the bag, they've been washed, it, it's even more helpful. Now so I just suggest that at least once a year, if you shop at Kohl's, yeah. one, that you save, that you use your Kohl's dollars and go and buy sheets because they're reasonably priced there and you get with your Kohl's dollars or your 30 or 10 or 20% off coupon, you can buy some nice sheets for those children. Mm -hmm. And Holly's is another good yeah, source. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of other places they have. You know. And they, are they all twin beds? Emily? Twin beds, yeah, only twin. Emily, are you are you the director of this? Oh no, 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 no. No, no, I'm just the representative here. I was part of the original you know, team yeah. that started it. So my heart is still in it. Still on the board, yeah. No, we have a wonderful director who Kate um, who's British and has a lovely accent. She's mm -hmm. she's just very efficient. She's applies for the foundation money. And <clears throat> what's so neat is that there are, Gloria Day was our first partner, and then Jarrettown, and then Subway, and then 
it just slowly has grown and grown. And, uh, uh, you know, I encourage everybody to go on the One House at a Time website, ohat.org. And you can find out so many opportunities to help, you know, with donations or with volunteer time at the warehouse. You know, we don't do deliveries right now, but ohat.org. And so you can do that. And, and you can get your name on the email list and you can find out other opportunities. Like there's a, a diamond donut, donate, you know, restaurants have been arranged, you know, that, you know, like, if uh, Wheelahan's Chang, Chang. No, yeah. had it, and there's a new place in Glenside had it for a fundraiser and so forth. There are all these opportunities. Amazon and Walnut, Walmart wish lists also, you can go there and make donations, you know, for uh, sheets and blankets and, and pillows. Is so there an Amazon smile? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pass the word on to your businesses or friends. They can have drives at the office, you know, or, you know, there's banks that have drives and so forth, and school groups that have drives. Wissick and clubs have had several drives for us, you know. So there, there are a lot of different ways to help out, you know, besides money. But do see me if you have any questions or want to oh. be on the list or Thank you. Thank you That's so wonderful. much. Thank you. It's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Here, three more stories. And again, these folks are invisible. I keep saying that to anybody who will listen to me. This church operates with an invisible army. You know, and we just sit there and say, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. But in the meantime, we have people giving up their hearts and their time. So, of our two remaining angels here, who wants to go? Totally up to you. I'm happy to go, but if you would prefer to go, oh, oh, me oh, oh, no. okay. We have to switch seats because oh, okay. that's okay. where the mic is. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's easier. Less. Here. Uh, and Megan, you can take your back. mask off, and then they can hear you better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi, <laughs> I'm Megan Navira. Um, We've been members here since 1990, no, 2000. I think it was the very beginning of 2000. We moved here in 1999. Um, and I came with a one-year-old and uh, who had just turned 23 <laughs> and uh, became pregnant with number two shortly thereafter. And it's just, you know, gone and on number since three then. and number four. And number three and number four. Every two years. <laughs> and so one of the things you know that we were looking for was a place with a good uh, youth and family ministry and um over the years we have uh participated in that extensively um and so you know and of course we sing in the choir uh, you know i so and have uh, i have felt called to participate in worship as well as a leader and uh, that has been a big part of, of what I, I like to do and um, so I am not a teacher, however, um, but I do oh, yeah. want to, <laughs> I, I'm not comfortable, you know, I have not called to, been called to be a Sunday school teacher, you know, right. I've wanted to support, you know, youth and family ministries in ways, but that's, that particular aspect is not something that that would be a chore for me. Um, that's not something. Well, what that, about your cradle? But well, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> um, and so I've I've looked for ways to support that those ministries in you know as well you know first of all providing uh, users <laughs> for the ministries. But, um, <laughs> and uh, you know and just and trying to raise my kids up in the church has been an important thing to me. Um, I grew up in a church family and, you know, my two brothers who attended church every Sunday with me, neither of them is a church goer now. And, you know, it's something, and I recognize that having four children, that it's not likely that all of them will continue as church goers, just the way our culture is set up. And of course the choice of a partner makes a, has a big impact 
on on whether or not people choose to continue as part of the church. But I really felt strongly about making sure that they had a really good grounding in in church teachings and uh, and that kind of thing. So um, when the so our church has a, a cradle role ministry, and when my kids were the it's from birth to um, age three, and although effectively it's usually from baptism to age three because we don't necessarily get, get, the, information. get the information until the child <clears throat> is baptized. Occasionally, I know somebody's had a baby, and even though they haven't been baptized yet, I'm like, hey, get me that information. But um, when my kids were uh, of a cradle roll age, um, the ministry was um, was done by two uh, older ladies, Mary Carpenter and Stella Valerie um, would do that. But what, the way they would do it was there's a there's a booklet of monthly uh, information that is sent out. And uh, they would send you on the child's birthday each year, they would send you, you had, you got a binder and then they would send you the entire booklet. And then you had to kind of like, the idea was that you would pull each one out as the month came. Well, what happened to me was that binder went on a shelf and it sat there and I never, you know, I was busy. I was, you know, and so when um, Stella and Mary retired from, from doing that, I felt called to kind of take it on to try to make it a little more uh, accessible, I guess, is a way. And so since then, so since 2007, almost every single month, I come in and I do a mailing. And so I pull them out of the book for people and they get mailed out. And so, uh, um, and, you know, people may, I don't know if people put them in their cycling, you know, this is one of those sort of take on faith kind of ministries. I send it out and I hope that I'm scattering my seeds. <laughs> I kind of think of it as, and I hope that people, even if they don't read it every month, but occasionally maybe something will catch their eye. And then as part of this, um, uh, it comes with a, a CD of songs. So for people to listen to and to hopefully sing with their children. And there's one, delightful. there's one each year. You get one, you know, at the beginning of each year. And so, uh, and then also as a sort of a corollary to this, um, we do cards for uh, birthdays and baptisms. And so you get a little, there's a little packet of cards and there's, you get one when they're baptized and then their first baptism anniversary, second baptism anniversary, and, um, and then first, or bapt, so I guess it's, yeah, first birthday, second birthday, third birthday, birthday, and then at their third birthday, I send them a letter and say, hey, you're graduating, congratulations, <laughs> you know, and here's, you know, here's information about joining our Sunday school program, and, uh, and do that, and so um, it's been, um, I don't know, I just, We've, you know, we've been thinking about, well, should we switch it to email? Should we? Because it comes as an electronic thing now. That's a possible thing to do. And I'm really, I really think I'm going to, you know, continue. Maybe we'll try to talk to some of the families and everything. But I think that people get so many emails. And I know yes. with yes. me yes. that an email comes in yeah. along those lines. And I'm like, oh, I want to read that. Yeah. But I can't right now. <laughs> and then it just slides down the list. And you More never, and then, <laughs> then when I'm deleting, when I'm deleting, things a month later I'm like oh shoot I never got around to reading that and, exactly. and so I'm thinking that maybe mail is still the way yes. to I go agree. Yeah. I agree. Would still is still the way to go yeah uh, I'm sorry I missed uh, what do you put in what you send every month what goes into your it's, it's newsletter a, or what it's a it? little newsletter yeah. that comes from Augsburg Publishing and it's um it's developmentally appropriate and okay. it's just monthly so for a three-month-old oh, okay you know, for a four month old, five month old, all the way up to 36 months. Okay. And, and it tells the parents, it gives them ideas of how to interact and, and speak about okay. their faith with the children. And, and just little things, even oh, just by nice. your loving and things it's like beautiful. that. It's beautiful, and it says, we care, we're right here with you. Well, and it also, and some, and it's fun things like, you know, here's how you say mother in four different languages. Mm -hmm. And here's how you, you know, you say prayer in four different languages or, you know, that kind of thing. And there's just, He's fun, you know, just sort of fun. So there's sort of developmental stuff, and then there's also faith development stuff. And uh, so I just, um, 
it's been it's been fun to see children like uh you know emily haverbush was one of my first uh my first babies that's how i know it was 2007 because that's when emily was born and uh you know why and thinking oh wow <laughs> you know, she was in our mom's group when you were too. yeah well yeah so um yeah so yeah and in 2007 i had um be a turned three in 2007, but it was like that fall is when I started is when I started doing it. And so, uh, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing that ever since. And, uh, and then, you know, and along those lines, also, I um, am part of the nursery school, my kids all attended the nursery school here. And uh, I'm president of the nursery school board, as well, and as a way to try to support that ministry, which is a yeah. wonderful uh, evangelism tool that we have here. Our so, nursery school is ranked very high. Very high. So, yeah, so that's kind of. So, how, that, how has that affected you? Because you said you don't really have a whole lot of interaction with the parents. So, you were really doing this in trust. I, I really am because, and every, you know, and I sort of, you know, I think, and, and it's not like we have our little bit in the annual report every year saying that there's so many families involved and, you know, that kind of thing. But um, I don't get feedback generally on that. But every once in a while, um, I was told I wasn't actually at the service this happened at, but we did uh, as a 1030 person at the nine o'clock sharing, I believe two or three years ago, a grandfather stood up and said, mm -hmm. I had no idea this was going on. My daughter and my grandchild are getting this every month and this is so cool and this is oh, so amazing. And you know, somebody made sure to tell, like, I don't know if Living was there and told me about it, but somebody who knew that I did it, you know, made sure that got back to me. And I was like, oh good. <laughs> you know, one of those, one of those seeds is growing. And vegan, other than the annual report, is your name associated with that daily? Um, only on, only on the graduation and the um. Because that might be a way for them to know everything. Maybe they just think the church them. Well, I was gonna say I don't like. In the interest of efficiency, that monthly mailing, I literally just pull it out, <laughs> mark it, staple it, slap sure. a sticker on it, and it goes in a stack. I don't like. I don't actually write anything yeah. each month. Um, and then on the, um, but just when I welcome people to the um, um, ministry, I sign the letter as cradle control uh, lead, leader, and then um, as, um, and then when they graduate, I sign the letter that oh, I that I do that. Cool. But but um, but like the birthday cards, I honestly feel like you know, I I kind of prefer to be. It's not my ministry so much. I feel like I'm well, sort of like you know, the hands of the community. And so like the little birthday cards, I say, you know, I always sign them love and blessings of her Dublin church mm -hmm. and um, rather than using my name. And so I did, um, uh, Brenna uh, Woods and I share a birthday, I found out doing the cradle. Bowl. So I have connected with Brenna as I'm like, hey, we're birthday buddies, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but, um, but other than that, I kind of, People may like that. I mean, your story is a really important story. And if there was a name associated, I mean, you're an experienced mother and you have lovely children. Yeah. Maybe somebody is going, I don't know how to be a mother. Maybe this person <laughs> yeah. uh, Maybe it's as simple as having your name on a return address sticker that says, you know, uh, vegan, yeah. um, yeah. Upper Dublin Lutheran Church Cradle Roll in the address or something. And maybe they can send, well, here, you don't want to send out your phone number, but that might be a way for them. No, I, I, I agree. I think that's really important to put your name on the bottom because then if they have questions, you know, or want to talk to you about this, uh, you know, and find out more about it, I think it's great to have your name at the bottom so that they know who to connect to. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't I'm sort of happy to just kind of be invisible no, in no. this and, and just, but you it's know. it's almost too invisible because, yeah. look at, you know, look at all of us who have no oh, idea, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's not so. a humility thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's okay. personal. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And babies can't say thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
but it's wonderful that you're continuing that you just felt called to do that because you didn't feel like you were called to be a priest of it. You feel so good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I feel like it's this way. It, it, you know, it's there's organization involved. I'm good at that kind of yeah. thing. There's like I I've got a system <clears> for doing <throat> it to keep you know to keep the kids in order and to know who's graduated and you know and I color code by year and you know and all that kind of stuff. And that's so, your ministry. That's you know and I yeah it's, it's you know as. If someone moves away, can you do you continue it? Um, yeah, I have a couple of kids I followed all over the country. Oh. There, somebody had a military parent, and mm -hmm. um, but net, often what happens is it gets returned, mm -hmm. and then if it has a forwarding address, I just change the address. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, if they're in Hawaii, they can't come to Sunday school. So oh, I always yeah. uh, that I personalize the letter then that we send with the graduation, say or, you know, or a congregation near you, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that you're now the That's age? That's a great idea. The yeah. age yeah. now you're the, the age. But yeah, and and I also have had people ask to have far away grandchildren. Mm -hmm. On like Vicki Spellman's children in, in oh, Maryland, yeah, yeah. you know, they were baptized here. But I went ahead and, and you know sent them the mailings, so mm, and, yeah. and then you know so in the, in those cases I do personalize that graduation letter and say you know find a congregation near you, but your child's old enough for Sunday school now. <laughs> you know what is your connection with Sunday school? Um, That's Libby has Libby has me on the Christian Ed Committee. I don't really do a lot with it, but basically every every september i give libby the names of all the graduates from this year and then she sends them a you know a packet to say come to sunday school and uh, yeah yeah so great well i i have to say too yeah. that uh the namira family <laughs> she's gonna throw it right back at me but when i first joined i i met them as a very young couple one or two babies, perhaps. I don't know. But I just started admiring them so much uh, because of what they represented. And that's what all of us can be for one another. This is a family, and we hear the phrase, it takes a village. Well, here, this is a family, a father who was a catechetics uh, leader for, every t for years until his last baby graduated from them. Now that's a commitment and that's what Megan does as well. They are, it's a family that is a role model and whether or not your children immediately go to church, you have planted some serious seeds. Well, and I want to, I mean, this is such an amazing congregation that um, I really feel that, um, you know, if we had been in another congregation, perhaps, even if we forced our kids to go every Sunday. And I think that's one reason my brothers chose to leave the church is that the congregations that we were in were not as nurturing as this congregation is. And I'm so thrilled that you and Libby have gotten Connor in as a, <laughs> as a catechetics yeah, leader because he, can you believe that's right. he's really, he's that's really, right. he's really oh. enjoying it. He's yeah. really, really yeah. enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> and I just, I'm, yeah. And he was like, maybe I'll bring my girlfriend to Christmas Eve service. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, so, thanks and, ever so and, much. And, and, uh, my both boys have volunteered also at one house at a time. Well, and Nick especially, they loves that. Yeah, Nick is so loyal. Well, and I want to say about one house at a time. I noticed, I just saw, I think on Facebook, it came across that one house at a time is selling pajama pants yes. and sweatpants yeah. as a fundraiser and so my kids are going to be getting <laughs> one house at a time oh, you know you, nick just said i need another pair of pajama pants and i was like aha <laughs> I know what you're getting. and the girls love those sweatpants with the open bottom you know so i was like all right i know what everybody's getting for christmas oh, so, very so, clever <laughs> so, okay thanks so much sure We'll do the rotation, I guess. <laughs> 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 Ivy comes okay. with her props, which is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and talk about an organized person. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, he keeps it. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Eileen Gann, and I know most of you in this room. 
Um, and my history at Upper Dublin is that I joined this church in 1984. No, I know. Because, because Carol and I joined on the oh, same day. Oh, I forgot that. So and um, it That's was Janet way. Wechter. Oh, it's it was Janet Wechter who followed up the first time we visited, you know, and came with a packet that yeah. afternoon. And we, at the time, we went to a few different churches, and Upper Dublin just was a standout, as we all know, for the, the welcome that everyone feels. So anyway, so that's my history. And I became involved with Alter Guild early on, because if you remember, we used to get a time and talent sheet, those mm -hmm. of you who've been around for many years. And that was something that I felt I could do was Alter Guild, because it was behind the scenes. <laughs> one of those invisible things. And um, the flexibility was there to come and set up the altar. You could just make the arrangements with the person that you were working with and so that it was convenient for everyone. And so I should answer the question, well, what is Altar Guild? And Altar Guild is a group of people who take the responsibility for setting up the altar, um, the Lord's <laughs> table every week and um, we have a setup team and we have a cleanup team each and every month. And we have two people in that role, um, both roles, so that we always have sort of a backup because people do have to go away for vacation, do have to go visit. And so this way we always have two people uh, for both roles. And basically, you know that there are different festival Sundays. Today was Christ the King. Today is Christ the King Sunday. <clears throat> and so I'm sure you've noticed, even online, that the pyramids are changed um, seasonally for the different festival Sundays. And there was a long period of time in the summer where it was pretty much green for like <laughs> three months. So uh, <laughs> there weren't a lot of changes there. Um, but under normal circumstances, we are very active in our setting up the altar and, and getting everything all ready. In pandemic times, because of the way that we take communion, we are on an altered schedule. And so Altar Guild all met in um, August because we were gearing up for a more, well, a return to normalcy in September. But when the COVID numbers continue to worsen, that plan, of course, had to be delayed. So right now, Altar Guild is very minimal activity, and Judy Umfer, who serves on Altar Guild, um, she and I have just been coming and changing the pyramids when it was appropriate to do that, so that we could, you know, online or in person, see, you know, the beautiful pyramids that the church has and change them with the seasons. So, who serves on Altar Guild? Well, there are some people in this room who serve on Altar Guild, <laughs> Megan Navera and Dottie Long and Emily Jeske, and um, there are people who may be watching this video who are longtime servers who have recently, in the last couple of years, years retired, and that would be Claire Thompson, Adele Beal, Donna Johnson, and for those of you who would remember Phyllis Kissinger, she yeah. was a wonderful, oh, wonderful right. storyteller, and she also was a great artist and her work lives on because she did a schedule many, many years ago for how we set up the altar. And it makes it wonderful. And we think of Phyllis, I think of Phyllis whenever I see this page, um, because it just is a quick reminder for us. so helpful when you're a newbie, especially. Yeah. Yes, yes. So Phyllis's work lives on. I, I'm not sure how long ago she passed away, but I think it's got to be maybe 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. She was yeah. a remarkable, yeah. remarkable yeah. lady. And each of these ladies who've retired really had special contributions to Alder Guild. Claire Thompson, if you know her, is as meticulous <laughs> as meticulous could be. And the last thing we would do after setting up the altar would be, you know, stand back and like, Go like this and make sure that that cross center. is perfectly the cross. The cross is the hang above. The center one is perfectly centered, <laughs> and that everything was just perfectly arranged. So she is she is a perfectionist and was a wonderful person to head Alter Guild for many years. And it was she who asked me to to take the chair chairmanship when she was ready to retire. 
Adele Veal, when we were distributing, Alter Guild used to be responsible for distributing the Alter flowers. Now it is the council person in charge who does that, which is a great relief for us. Just because of the timing and logistics, it's hard to be cleaning up the altar and finding people that you can give the altar flowers to. So now it's council person in charge. But Adele always used to keep track of who should get the altar flowers. Mm -hmm. And she, whoever, whoever was serving on altar guild, Adele would come up and say, I think you could give the flowers today to this one and that one. And it was a tremendous yeah. help. Donna Johnson is the most amazing ironer that I have ever <laughs> and also stain remover. And stain yeah, remover. She is the stain remover whisperer. <laughs> and stain remover, exactly. And I, she would just, every once in a while, go into the drawer where our linens are, and she would just take home everything in there and wash it and iron it while it was wet, yeah. and then put them in plastic bags yeah. and bring them back. Pristine. And pristine. pristine. And they were just magnificent and so beautiful to put out. So we remember each of those ladies and their wonderful contributions mm -hmm. over many years. So what does Alder Guild do? Well, we, we, come, we have two teams, as I mentioned. We have the setup and the cleanup team. The setup team is usually people who come to either the 745 or the 9 o'clock under normal schedule. And then the cleanup people are the people who attend the 1030 because they're already here. And it really makes sense for them sure to be the yeah. cleanup people. Yeah. So that works out very well. But we have we have a variety of linens that we use, and I didn't bring them all, but I thought it would be nice for you to see that when when communion is served, um, what's actually happening is the, the wine is in the flagon, which is another name for pitcher. It's a flagon. And when we all joined Alder Guild, we all had to learn this language because that was everywhere. So this is the flagon, and this is filled by the council person in charge with wine. And then the uh, then it the wine is poured into the um, ceramic, the ceramic right. chalice, thanks. And the grape juice is put in the silver chalice beforehand. And then, as you know, the pastors all explain to people which is which. And we do get people ask us mm -hmm. when we're up there. If we're communion yes. assistants, you know, mm -hmm. people say, which one's the wine? So you have to make sure. Mm -hmm. And then this is a patent, which we would think of as a plate, but the correct name from biblical times is a patent. And it's this on which the communion bread is um, kept and from which it is served. So and you can see how ancient this ritual is and how sacred it is and that's because of its lush history it has such meaning which is just beautiful it is and so when we set up for communion we don't we are setting up a couple days before and so we don't fill anything we simply set it up and have it ready for the council person in charge to fill that morning yeah, this may be more detailed than everybody wants, but I no, thought this is good. Keep going. <laughs> good. So then this is a purificator, and it's really the size of a linen handkerchief. If you think of the old days when men all had linen handkerchiefs, <laughs> it's that size. And so we would put the purificator over the chalice, and then we have a board. And I'm not sure who developed this, but this is to give us the support that we need before we put on the veil. The first, isn't it called the first? This one. First. First. No, is that or, or that? What's that? That's just that's just the okay. support for it. The, the that's the first. that's the burst. And we always have to put two purificators inside the burst. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and this is where you have to match up the crosses. <laughs> that's yeah. right. You have to match up the crosses and you know set it up so that it is you know as close as it can be to Right, because then again, the council person in charge is going to remove this and fill, fill the chalice that morning. But anyway, this is the veil, it makes sense. It's the veil that's covering the chalice. And then this is the verse. And the verse, again, we have to line it up with the, the cross. And there's always there are always two purificators in here, one for each communion server or the pastors, whoever is doing that. So that's pretty much what we do. Question, which I've always been curious. The spoon. 
the spoon. So there is a little teeny tiny spoon. It's and startling, but I've never known what it's called. Well, that dates back, as I understand it, to biblical times when communion was served outdoors. And the tiny spoon was in case an insect had gotten in your form. <laughs> no, no, no. no. So the fly. Can I, can I use it when someone drops their bread? In you can. Line? That's exactly, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what the okay. use is for. Yes. 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 The modern use is for that cute little spoon. We have after communion now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, when, when we ask, well, how did we end up on Alder Guild and why are we drawn to this ministry? And everybody in this room has a different reason. And I know Dottie's mom served on Alder Guild. I know Judy's, Judy Umfer's mom served on Alder Guild. How about you, Emily? No, just, she liked a pretty cable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, I saw the need and I saw the need. And I thought something I could do. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. We're so grateful to you. Um, when we serve on Alter Guild, one of the nice benefits is that we get to know some of the people on Alter Guild that we might not have known before. We always have the choice to choose someone to serve with, except when we're brand new. When we're brand new on Alter Guild, we always will pair that person with someone who's more senior on Alter Guild, just so that you have someone who, you know, knows all the tricks of the trade. So um, I wanted to tell you that you were talking about having a birthday mate. Um, well, Judy Umfer and I have served together for years, and she and I discovered that we, our birthdays are a day apart, <laughs> but on the same year. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Which is truly wow. remarkable. Oh, yeah. And I grew up in Frankfurt, and Judy grew up in Mayfair, and here we were. We mm -hmm. end up at Upper wow. Dublin Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. And that's wild. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So, you get to know some of the people that you might not know. And it, it really is very enjoyable to get to know people at that level. You know, you're, you have a conversation, you're getting, Working figuring out what side. you need yeah, and yeah, changing yeah, the yeah. linens yeah. and, and the altar linens, you wouldn't know the pyramids are very heavy. Oh, yes. And so when <laughs> we put them on the altar, we have to backload the hem at the back with brass bars yes. to support it, to keep to keep it from falling off. So it's it's a job and it takes two people to change to change the altar linens. So um, it is a wonderful expression of our faith to serve on altar guild because communion is central to our faith. And um, and it's something that we we take every single week now during the pandemic. In the past it's been we've always had a schedule it was you know the first of the month for this service and then you know, the third of the month, the first and third, for, but now it's just every Sunday. But of course, mm -hmm. we're not making use of, only the pastors are making right. use of the yeah. chalice. We're all taking our little, our little kits. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that really develops from serving on altar deal is that wine, red wine, of course, is very difficult to get out of limits. <laughs> and invariably, some red wine is spilled. It's either on the, um, could be on the purificators. It could be on the, uh, the cor corporal cloth that's underneath. We normally have a corporal cloth under, when you see the altar, you'll see that. And it can also be on the credence table where some, something happens. But every once in a while, we have something really awful happen mm -hmm. where a chalice is knocked over. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, and then, then we have a, a job to do. So it was about a couple of years ago, it was two years ago, I think it was right before the pandemic, and we had one of those spills. And somebody called me and I said, I'll be right over. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got to I got to church and it was a very bad spill and it completely covered um, the veil. It was just all over the veil. So I went to a dry cleaner knowing full well that they wouldn't take it, but I had to try. You know, I got right over there, it was still all wet. And, um, you know, they said, no, they wouldn't take it. And we know that from previous history. So um, I did ask the cleaner what he would suggest doing. And he said, you know, you can use salt, you can use club soda, you can do a hot soap. So basically, and this is where, this is where I can feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> because when we have a problem like this, and we have this veil, and it's part of a set, and the company that made all these things is no longer in business. <laughs> And the veil matches the rest of the pyramids. So, you know, 
It just has to be fixed. So literally over the next five days, my laundry tub would be changed every couple hours. Hot water, salt, club soda. Um, I, it would get a little lighter every time, but what I had to do was protect the embroidery to make sure yeah. that none of these um, chemicals got on that because you're afraid that it's gonna run. So if anybody knows what Turvis tumblers are, Turvis tumblers played a part in this <laughs> renewal because, or this restoration, because I couldn't get the embroidery wet. So I had, you know, the hot water and whatever I was using that time with club soda, Tide, um, and the Turvis tumbler keeping the embroidery above so that it wasn't touched. And after five days, I'm happy to tell you that that veil was fully restored and it's the one we use today. Oh, wow. so, oh, that's great. Yeah. So Is anyway. that not a miracle? <laughs> <laughs> so, and some of these tricks we've learned from some of the, the ladies who are now retired from Alder Guild because mm -hmm. you know they, we, we had a certain way we were supposed to do things. And you poured hot water over the wine and you lighten it that way. And then, you know, you would do whatever you could and get it later, later and later. And get a lot of times on the smaller claws. But um, Donna Johnson shared a wonderful tip that I'm going to share with you today. That if you have a white piece of fabric that has red wine on it and you've tried everything you can and you've gotten it as late as you can, you want to get your Tylex for mold and mildew and give it a shot and that stain will disappear. Wow. So just a little thing, because again, red wine, we all have red wine spills at home. So it's, it's a good trick and a trick. I just have to jump in and share with you what our pastor, Pastor Keith, he, he was only with us for perhaps a month or so and he was doing the communion and spilled the whole chalice perhaps <laughs> over the whole, well, if you could have taken a picture of that man's face. <laughs> Probably he, pretty red. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> said to me later, he thought, oh, they're going to drive me out of town. <laughs> but, yeah. and, I, and I think that was, if I'm not mistaken, that was the Lenten pyramid, the Lenten um, super frontal that goes down. I, I'm pretty sure it was that one because Judy ended up taking that to her own dry cleaner and pleaded a case. And I guess because it was purple, and the red wine wasn't as visible. Yeah. They they took it and they, they got it yeah. out. So it was a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was this one that you're fixing. Yeah. 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 So it just it just took time. <laughs> it just yeah. took time. And that piece is much thicker mm -hmm. ever than yeah. uh, those of us standing if you know. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. I can see how, how intentional people have to be to line it up. Okay. Exactly. And then I see pastors careful, and I've seen some pastors not Not this church, but other <laughs> Yes. So, um, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Because it's a delicate fabric. The product that I know of that really, really works is Carbona, which is the product from Germany. It comes in little yellow bottles. And, mm -hmm. and where do you get that? At the grocery store. Oh, really? Every yeah. yeah. yeah what section? Uh, in, where, in the laundry section? Laundry section. Yeah. Carbona. C-A-R-B-O-N-A. And there's for red wine, there's for <laughs> uh, ink, uh, for ketchup, for, you know, all kinds of different kinds. But that stuff works fabulous. You have to dissolve it in the hot water. You have to concentrate. And, I yeah, mean, you have to, I'm sorry, you have to, yeah. what am I trying to say? So you have to dissolve it. It is a concentrate. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. but that works great for red wine, too. And I did that for it once when there was a major spill on the altar cloth, and I took it home. Yeah. So right. I just want to say one thing I learned with doing altar hill is that everything is folded in thirds for the holy trinity. Oh, right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. such beautiful yeah. ritual yeah. with yeah. this yeah. that you, you feel you feel connected to the past. You do. Yes. You yes. do. And you feel God present, you know, as you do it, mm -hmm. you know. But I have to say the first time I was assisting minister and I was doing the you know serving the, the wine and it spilled and went right down on my and I forget this other, but the look of, they said to me, I looked like a deer caught in the, uh, <laughs> and I had sandals on, 
And I went to walk and walked right out of my shoe. I mean, it was a horrible day. <laughs> but it made me realize that this congregation loves you in spite of anything. <laughs> I, I must say, did you do the banners too? Are the side banners? Or? No, no. They, okay. um, and Carol, thanks for asking that. That is a separate ministry. Mm -hmm. And really, with the pandemic, I think they just kind of left the green up because yeah. um, rather than coming in and, and changing them. So, but that is a different group. It's it's uh, Jody Spray and Gary Spray. And, and I don't mean the ones by the windows. I mean, oh. I mean the ones that come on the altar up, 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 behind. You know, the, oh, yeah. behind the altar. They're, they're, they're for the seasons. different seasons. You know, like the, oh, the, the, the banners. Yeah. Are we talking about the banners? Uh, yeah. What you, oh, yeah, things banners. that people carry in. Yes, it's the banners. Oh, that banners. is the banners. Yes, yeah. and so they are seasonal, and we do have we do have an altar guild manual, yeah. and we because there's a lot of stuff to remember, as you can imagine. But um, we do have photographs of the banners in here so that people can check and see, you know, if it's- Which ones go up? Which, which ones go up? Yep. Yeah. Yes. For the different, for seasons. The different seasons. Yeah. So just, that's an just invaluable just, tool. As just as a ready reference. Mm -hmm. Do you do the flowers too? We don't, no. we used to, but now the council person in charge okay. does and tries to hand those out as people are leaving the church so that they can just take them. So they do the point and all that at Christmas time too, the council or? No, that, no, that's, 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 that's the altar it's someone, it's, it's always this altar guild. It's usually, in yes, in conjunction with altar guild because, but it's usually a separate person who is charged with that and does the ordering and then we coordinate with them when they're going to be delivered so that we can make sure the altar is set up in time for them, you know, to move the point set out. So right. I always thought ministry. that this job, if you could call it a job, was an especially holy job. Mm -hmm. Because you're you're doing you're working with the elements. You are following the pastor's lead. And the pastor and the existing whoever else is up there depend on you if you don't have it right. Yes, you know, yes, you're every, right. Everything mm -hmm. that you do, the, the, the placement, uh, I mean, if they, if they don't see that it's not where it's supposed to be, you know, all that. It's just yes. so meaningful to me. Well, thank you, Sally. It, it really is. And and it's so wonderful to be in the sanctuary with the peace and quiet. You know, you leave the honking horns outside and you walk in and, you know, it's it's really, it's a spiritual experience. It really is. So thank you for saying that. You think of it as a, 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 a not so important job, you know, as though it's, you know, but oh my goodness. Well, thank you. That was lovely. It really set the tone. You know, it, how people get brought into the season or whatever we're celebrating. Yes. Yeah, along with the Eucharist, the, the whole context. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last question on Elizabeth's document was, what support can the congregation give you? And we always need to have new members. We always need to have people in training and ready to step up because people... You know, people move away, people uh, retire, people's circumstances change and they have to step down. So I will say, this is a long-term commitment for a lot of people. Oh. Emily, how long have you been on Alter Guild? You were a chair for many years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would probably say, let's see, I joined in 78, so probably shortly after that. And I've been on ever since. So, yes. Four years. And, yeah, yes. four years. Yeah, probably four years. So, <laughs> but it is one of the easiest things you can do. It is one of the most spiritual things that you can do. And it's one of the most joyful things that you can do. And you don't have monthly meetings at nighttime, yeah. which yeah. deters some people from doing something. It, it is, you receive so much back from it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you and do. there is a class example. You know what? What you give out, you get back so much more. Well, thank you, thank you. It, it really is wonderful. And as I say, our our servers are so loyal. They just, you know, they stay for so long. It's wonderful. So.
itself. Can you speak about why it's red wine at this church because not everybody does it yet? Well, I think again, it's just the tradition because the body of Christ, you know, the red wine, I guess it's more symbolic. There are some churches who do use white wine, and we did receive that recommendation, uh, and it, it was discussed, but ultimately the pastors decide on it. That would be their decision. So I think it's just because the red wine and the grape juice are so traditional and red. Representing the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Christ. Of Christ. Yes. Yep. Yes. I mean, that's what we say. We literally exactly. sang about the crimson drink yes. <laughs> today. Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think that was a contemporary. Yeah. yeah. Too. That was. was. That yeah. yeah. The contemporary words to that tune. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, this is great. I'll never look at communion the same again. <laughs> this is very educational. I didn't know a lot of this stuff. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Great job. Good rest of today. Uh, may you uh, have an uneventful week. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.